so you hadn't seen this car before, trailing you, watching you? What is your relationship with this client that you say has threatened you? Look, I have to respect confidentiality here. I'll tell you everything I can. I did a job for this client. When that job was complete, another was presented to me. One I didn't take. On ethical, moral, and criminal grounds. Said client became enraged, swore she would change my mind. I didn't. Client began to harass me through third parties, leaving no trail back to them. Then I was told if I didn't complete the task required of me, they would get to me by hurting my friends. Your friend, as in Sarah Robert. That's right. This client wouldn't take no for an answer. And they didn't like how much I knew about them. So they followed you and shot at you, hitting Sarah. Yeah, something like that. At least that's what makes sense. What do you mean something like that? I think Sarah was the intended target. I came to Toronto to warn her to keep her safe. How'd your client even know that Sarah was alive? As far as anybody knows, she's still missing in Italy. I thought about that. There are too many coincidences. The client knew too much. It wasn't until last night at the hotel that I realized that they probably tracked my phone. Which means they heard the conversation between Sarah and I when she called me last week. They knew I was trying to find her. And if they did track my phone, they would know exactly where I was and when. Are you saying that this is all your fault? That you're responsible for this? I can't live with that. Responsibility to have that to own? That will be too much. I came here as a friend to warn her to keep her safe. I shot at the fleeing vehicle. I did everything right. Sometimes the ball falls and there's nothing anyone can do. Aaron, if I could trade places with her, I would. You gotta know that. You have to consider how many years that Sarah and I have worked together. Getting to her was the last twist to the negotiation that my client needed. But by doing this, they have sealed their own fate. Something's bothering me. What? Why would someone travel across the United States and enter Canada just to chase you down and shoot your friend? Why not perform this task themselves, whatever it is they wanted you to do? I don't know. What's the worst they could have asked of you? Kill someone? Torture someone? If what you're saying is true, and they hired someone to trail you here, then why not use tonight's shooter to perform whatever task they wanted you to do, instead of taking out Sarah? You're no longer a part of it if they have a shooter. So what am I missing? I have no clue. But I'm going to do everything I can to find out. Gentlemen, why don't you come with me to my office? Parkman, you coming? Have a seat. How is she? To be honest, she's not out of the woods yet. What does that mean? (sighs) She's a fighter, that girl. But she sustained a major blow to the head. That's what we call a TBI. Which is? Traumatic brain injury. 
How bad? I'm not entirely sure yet. What confuses me was the way she arrived. How are you confused? Well, <clears throat> when emergency services personnel arrive at the scene of a TBI, they're supposed to get her eyes open, check for movement, verbal response. But she was unconscious. Right, I understand, but that's what we do. By the time she gets here, she's already supposed to be sedated and have a tube running into her lungs so we can make sure she has enough oxygen to perform a CT scan. Luckily, Sarah was breathing on her own. Her blood pressure was relatively good. Her oxygen levels were high enough that we could do the CT. Most of the time, with a gunshot wound to the head, that wouldn't happen. So what are you saying? We were able to resuscitate her here, and she was able to talk for a moment. Did she say anything important? <sighs> she kept saying a girl's name. Her own? No, no. Uh, she kept saying um, Vivian over and over again. Something about um, Vivian being in her head. Vivian helped her to be dead. Dead? No, she's not dead now. We, we got the bullet out and we sent it to forensics. Now I'm dealing with swelling on her brain. The problem is that there's no place for the brain to swell since it's encased inside the skull. She's facing some serious intracranial pressure and it's not looking good. When will she be out of the woods? Uh, it's difficult to say. Like, I, I wish I had some better news to give you. I'm sorry. Is there anything else you can tell us? If and when Sarah regains consciousness, certain neurologically based symptoms may appear, like aggression or irritability. Don't worry about that. Sarah's aggressive by nature. If everything goes well, if we get the swelling down, over time, the brain will approach physiological stability again. Even though neurons in the brain don't mend themselves, New neurons won't grow back in a way that leads to full recovery. Look, I can't even promise that Sarah will come out of this. I need you guys to understand that the news may not be what you expect it to be. So what are you saying? I mean, can you give us some odds? Like 50-50? More like 80-20. But that's not bad. 20% she lives. 80% we lose her. Certain parts of Sarah's brain are damaged and there's nothing anybody can do about that. Only time will tell whether Sarah Roberts will be damaged if she pulls out of this. And that's not looking good right now. Like, I have to get back. I need you guys to understand you may have to face the inevitable. If she has any relatives nearby, have them come in before it's too late. In the meantime, I'll do what I can to save her. I gotta go to my car for some paperwork. Now, I don't expect you to come to the station right now, as I'm sure you wanna hang out here and wait to hear more. So I'll bring paper and a pen to get your statement while it's still fresh in your mind. It's fine. All right, give me five minutes. What are you gonna do? Wait around here. Got nowhere to go until Sarah wakes up. What about the dojo? I'll get my guys to open it for me in the morning. It's no problem. You know my relationship with Sarah. I would die for her. I didn't do this. This was a culmination of a chain of events and it may lie on my shoulder. Parkman. If I thought you would have shot Sarah, or it is any way directly your fault, you'd be on that operating table as well. Fair enough. I get it. Why don't you run and fetch us a couple of coffees from the cafeteria? I'll wait here. Sounds good. Oh, hey. Just see if they got any toothpicks, all right?
Still not talking? Set. Where's Aaron? He went for coffee. You think he's good in three? I can't be sure. You know the drill. I need your statement. Write it out as best you can, be as detailed as possible, and write it so I can read it. I'm going to need a couple of hours. I don't think any of us are going anywhere anytime soon. While you get started, I'm going to go try to find that doctor. I have a couple questions for him. Hey, did you catch his name? The nameplate on the door said Jacob, so I'm assuming he's Dr. Jacob. Shit, I missed it. I'm usually observant enough to catch that sort of thing. I'll be right back. I didn't know if you took cream or sugar, so I just left the black. Black's fine. Nothing for the detective? Forgot. He can go get his own when he comes back. I'm gonna write my statement. I'm gonna hang out here until I hear something else from the doctor. What is it? Unless it wasn't the car. So what if the shooter had been waiting across the street, listening with a parabolic mic or something? They would have waited till the car passed, took the shot. Sarah and I would have assumed the shot came from the car. Won't the investigators look across the street for any evidence of a shooter? Not necessarily. They might. Especially if they suspected that was the scenario. Based on my statement, the shot came from the car. Hey, I'm not done with that. I know, I'm just checking something. Ask me if you need clarity. I know what I wrote. Parkin? What? What kind of gun do you carry? A Glock 22. Why? Dr. Jacob was able to remove the bullet when Sarah arrived. It was in relatively good shape. What does that mean? It still has to undergo testing at the lab, but upon visual inspection, it looks like it's a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson bullet. So the gunman and I used the same ammunition? The first responders called me when I went down to my car 10 minutes ago. What did they say? They located the car you shot at already. Good. Not good. Why? A man driving the car works three buildings down from where you and Sarah were. He had a baby in the back seat on the account that his wife had recently died of cancer. As he drove by your location, he claims that he thought he heard a firecracker go off, which startled him and made him duck his head. Just before he passed your location, he says he thought he saw a woman with long blonde hair fall to the cement in front of a man with a gun in his hand. Then the gunman tried to take him out too. The baby had to get splinters of glass removed from her ear because you blew out the back window. The father is being treated for shock as we speak. The officers have a theory. They think you waited for the car to drive by, shot Sarah, 
and then emptied your weapon at the fleeing vehicle. Why the fuck would I shoot Sarah, huh? Calm down. Tell me that. They think you shot Sarah because of the note they found in your jacket at the scene. I just checked your handwriting with what's on this note. From what I can tell, you wrote it. Care to explain? What did the note say? That Sarah would die with a bullet to the head. It was signed by a woman named Violetta, but it's Parkman's handwriting. Are you trying to set this woman up? Were you trying to kill your friend? Come on, Parkman, tell me the truth. No more bullshit. All right, we'll lock you up. You wanna put these on now or later? They're still trying to locate Dr. Jacob, uh, but she mentioned that there's an empty room down the hall that we can use to talk. Well? Yes, I wrote the letter, but under duress. What duress? Mark, this is gonna be really hard on me, but I'm gonna be honest with you here. I hope so. Unless it shows up in the course of the investigation or ends up in court, I don't want anything repeated outside this room. Fine. It's your business unless it becomes mine. Aaron? Parkman, you've known Sarah longer than I have. You're a trusted member of her family. So whatever's happened to you is going to bother me deeply. Look, once she's better, we'll figure everything out. For now, just deal with these local cops and we'll deal with all this other shit after. But don't ask me about confidentiality. You don't need to. I've got your back. What's this about fixing things after you're done with local cops? No disrespect, Joffrey, but uh, I don't have a lot of respect as far as the lengths law enforcement goes to. You got your thing to do, I get it. Go ahead and do your thing. But I do mine just a little bit different. And what exactly is your kind of thing? Guys, aren't we here to discuss what's going on with Sarah? My thing is everything yours isn't. That's a lot of thing. Guys! Maybe one day I'll get to see what it is you do, Aaron. You stick around, you'll find out. Got it. Parkman, you have the floor. Look, I was instructed to locate a man. I did that. I took pictures, I went to the hotel and sent him to the client. I was supposed to fly home the day after. Where were you, what city? Nafplio. Where's that? Greece. Bad experience, bad memories. Good hospital though. Was that an example of you doing your thing? Something like that. Guys, seriously, fuck. Why didn't you fly home? I did fly home. You said you were supposed to fly home. I was supposed to fly home as the job was complete. The client asked me for another service. And that was? To bring the man I found with me, willingly or unwillingly. And? And I refused. I'm a private investigator, not a human delivery man. If I return the woman's husband, I would receive a bonus that amounted to about a quarter of a million dollars. Wow, this woman really wants her husband back. She's quite rich and very demanding. I'm assuming people do what she asks or she finds someone who will. Again, I refused. Then she asked me if I wanted a cool half million bucks. And you agreed, right? She wanted me to put her husband in a wheelchair to force him to come home for special care. That way he couldn't run from her but his hands would still work for signing documents, for she has deals pending that won't go through without him. Oh man, hell hath no fury. I flat out refused. Then I was informed that either I work for her or I don't. It sounded reasonable, so I told her I don't. Then I was told, now get this, that either I was a friend or an enemy, and since I'm not doing her bidding, I'm declared an enemy, that I was to expect to get what enemies get. And she hung up. And what did you get? <laughs> Harassed for a week before I was jumped, tossed into a van, taken to a warehouse where they stripped me and did things I'd rather not say. 
and have no value in furthering your investigation. Oh, shit. I'm sorry, Parkin. Could have called me and Sarah. We would have helped. You were missing Sarah. She only showed back up a week ago. When I was held captive, they made me write a letter in my own handwriting. The whole idea was to set me up to take the fall. I only kept the letter to show Sarah their intentions. They relieved me of my Glock 22 at that time. It's amazing how fast they got to Sarah. I mean, nobody even knew she was alive until a week ago. Sarah called me once she got on Canadian soil again. She told me she was going to surprise you with dinner at the keg. Shit. Exactly. They decided to hurt Sarah and somehow make me do it. They had a letter in my handwriting. They had my gun. They followed every move I made. Once I lost her a trail, or I thought I did, I came here to warn Sarah. Let me get this straight. Are you saying that they used your gun on Sarah, made you write the letter that was in your jacket, followed you to Toronto, and shot her just so that you would take the fall? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. But add that they expertly waited for the car to drive by and take the shot. So I would think the shooter was in the car and shoot an innocent party. That would at least get me jail time. I mean, they had this set up from day one. Either I do what the client says or I go down hard. Although, the more I think about it, the more I don't think they meant to hit Sarah. Oh, they don't need me. Maybe they thought they could recruit her. Why not use the shooter to deal with the husband? Why not leave you out of it? You know, I did as much research on the family as I could. Their daughter is a 17-year-old marksman, one of the best at the range she shoots at. Now, my guess is she was the shooter. But mommy won't have daughter go after daddy. She might cloud her judgment at the last minute. My guess is mommy hadn't told daughter everything. That's a lot of guessing, especially that a 17-year-old would travel cross-country just to fire a warning shot. I don't know what else to think. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know this room was being used. It's empty. We're just leaving. I'm going to find Dr. Jacobs, see if he knows anything. So are we cool? For now, Cyrus and your reputation here in Toronto has bought you the benefit of doubt. But I will want to check into this client of yours soon. Doc, Doc, Doc. Is there any way to get Dr. Jacob out here so we can get a situation on Sarah Roberts? I'd really like to see her. Who are you asking about? A lot of our doctors just did a morning shift change. Dr. Jacob. His office is right across the hall. You must be mistaken. That's Dr. Alvarez's office. One second. I have rounds to do. I understand. But I ask you about Dr. Jacob. Do you know him? I have never heard of Dr. Jacob. I've been here for seven years and have never heard of him. Well, what about Sarah Roberts? She's a gunshot victim. She was brought in here about six hours ago. Can you please give me a, a current situation on her? I really want to see her. Yeah. Maybe check with admitting. She must have been moved. Moved? How was she moved? She was in surgery. I don't know, but on my rounds, there is no Sarah Roberts. No gunshot victims have been brought in in the past six hours. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the name Sarah Roberts just isn't on them. She's stable. I'm on my way to the rendezvous point. 